in this smartphone show. The thinnest S60 smartphone ever, a hands-on review of the Nokia N76, also a feature on improving the battery life of your smartphone. From network mode to emergency chargers, there are hints and tips here, whichever platform, whichever operating system your smartphone runs. Sony Ericsson has announced the W960, their top-of-the-line Walkman phone. Headline features include 8GB of flash memory, Wi-Fi and a 3 megapixel camera with autofocus. The W960 runs UIQ3 on top of Symbian OS and weighs 119 grams, a similar size to the W950. Opera Mini, the Java-based and free web browser that we all love to bits because it squeezes websites down to as little as a tenth their original byte size and thus saves us money, has been given a huge upgrade. Opera Mini 4 is available right now in beta form and has many of the full rendering capabilities of, for example, the S60 web browser, along with the intelligence of the upcoming Apple iPhone Safari browser, yet all the while keeping the big bandwidth saving benefits. An astonishing achievement. They do note that it's a bit hungry for RAM, at least in its current beta form. Look out for a feature on RAM and why it's important in an upcoming smartphone show. Nokia continue their new love affair with Apple with a new suite, Nokia Media Transfer, allowing full sync of photos and music between N-series smartphones and Mac OS X. It looks very good, but don't despair if you've got an E-series S60 smartphone, as support for these are coming. Uh, there are unofficial profiles for E-Series devices at the URL shown here. Finally, don't forget to update your device's firmware. Windows Mobile 5 users should check their manufacturer websites for possible free Windows Mobile 6 upgrades, while Nokia software update continues to be active, with a huge new N73 update now online, and Sony Ericsson's update service offering a much better R6 firmware for the P990i and R9 firmware for the M600i. All the usual precautions about backing up and syncing before updating apply, of course. Don't come to me crying if you end up wiping your unbacked up data. The Nokia N76 emulates the iconic Motorola Razr design, ironically just as the Razr 2 has ditched the Razr's distinctive bottom bump. But luckily there's more to the N76 than just imitation. It's certainly Nokia's thinnest smartphone yet, only 7mm thick along most of its length, and the entire closed device only 13mm thick. However, part of designing a smartphone should surely be taking into account the people it's aimed at and how they're going to use it. In the N76's case, I'm not entirely sure that the various departments at Nokia have been talking to each other. The Nokia N76 is clearly aimed at the youth and general style-conscious market, and not at geeks like me. And yet, whereas I would typically keep my smartphone in a protective case and treat it with kid gloves, the average Razer or N76 user will use it anytime, anywhere, from down the shops to fast food restaurants to down the pub. In each case, there's a lot of potentially grubby handling going on. And unfortunately, the N76 has been designed to be an utter magnet for greasy fingerprints. From the mirror finish top screen, which doubles surprisingly well as a, a lady or gent's pocket mirror, to the music controls and their surrounds, to the silver panel on the back, to the main keypad surround and even the screen itself, there are fingerprints and marks everywhere you look. I'm sure that the polished perfection looks stunning in the design office, but back in the real world the result is less than satisfactory. But assuming that you're happy to keep polishing away, there's the usual Nokia N-Series and S60 goodness under the hood, thankfully. It's S60 3rd edition feature pack 1 with a very similar application set to the much vaunted Nokia N95. PIM apps, office viewers, messaging and the comprehensive feature pack 1 web browser, although of course you're limited to a portrait mode. The hardware's not as powerful though, uh, certainly with no GPS, no Wi-Fi. As to the main features, here we're talking an average 2 megapixel camera with CIF video recording. There's hardware music controls, which work well enough and even double as camera menu controls, but there's a disappointing lag between pressing pause, for example, and the music actually stopping. The external screen appears behind the mirror exterior and doubles as the camera viewfinder, but like the main display, both are very reflective and frustratingly hard to read in bright light. There's no A2DP, though the latter could be added in a firmware update, I guess, for Bluetooth stereo support. I liked the metallic etched keypad more than I thought I would. Despite the utter flatness, there's enough mechanical click to help you type or dial accurately. 
and even the D-pad was positive, and I loved the 40-odd megabytes of free RAM, ensuring that applications will never get closed down through lack of memory. I liked the way Nokia has included a standard 3.5mm stereo headphone jack and a mini USB for connectivity, although you can't open the clamshell fully with these plugged in, which seems a bit odd. Also, it is the way the SIM card has to be inserted into a caddy before sliding into place, and the weird way the battery has to be put in upside down, with the power pins almost flush with the rear surface of the phone. But I guess there are plenty of design constraints to be taken into account when you're making a smartphone this thin. There's no doubting the diminutive size of the Nokia N76, or the, quote, gorgeous styling, but I do worry that its perfect looks will be spoilt in the real world. Now I appreciate that if you're an experienced smartphone or PDA owner, the most of these tips, and I'll keep them as rapid far as I can, will seem obvious to you, but hopefully you'll take away at least one new thing to try in the never-ending battle for the true road warrior to keep your smartphone charged. Number one, put your smartphone into offline or flight mode overnight. This way you gain all the benefits of knowing that its battery-hungry radios are turned off without having to boot up from scratch and start all your applications again each morning. As a side benefit, you won't get woken up by a phone call from a crank like me at 3am. Number two, keep Bluetooth, infrared and Wi-Fi off whenever not actively using them. All three do place a drain on your device, with perhaps Wi-Fi being the biggest power hook. On most smartphones, there's an extra power saving mode for Wi-Fi. Do make sure this is enabled. Don't install utilities that run all the time in the background, performing some task or other. Prime culprits here are unnecessary antivirus and firewall software for Symbian-based devices especially, which are immune. But also watch out for photo uploaders and screensavers. When troubleshooting battery problems, these should be first on your suspect list. Number four, in the same way, don't leave action games running in the background. These tend to be on fast internal loops and often lazily programmed. If you finish playing such a game, exit it properly at the next convenient point. Number five, there's always some saving to be made in turning down the brightness of your screen. But this is a personal thing and the whole point of having a modern smartphone is that you can enjoy the bright and vibrant screen. But even a couple of notches will probably help. Similarly, shorten the screen's power saving interval so that it blanks sooner after your last button press or stylus stroke. Number six, a tech tip this, but one thing that can really tax a smartphone's battery is when you're at the limit of 3G coverage and the device is having to work at full power just to stay in touch with the base stations. If you know 3G is weak where you are, or if you never use 3G causal data anyway, for example using GPRS, then note that you can switch most smartphones to GSM only mode, which can potentially save an awful lot of power. Number seven, the biggest single drain for any modern device is often its camera. There's not much you can do about this other than to exit the camera application immediately after taking photos, rather than leaving it to drift into standby mode after wasting your smartphone battery for another minute or so, quite needlessly. So far so good, hopefully. Another thing you can do on top of making sure that you give your pocket brain its nightly full charge is to make the most of any charging opportunities you do get. A 12 volt car lead is inexpensive and a very convenient way to top up a smartphone battery with it when heading off on a long trip. Solar chargers are now very common, although do make sure you get one with a built-in rechargeable battery. Having to sit there while your smartphone trickle charges from the sun is a huge headache. Much better to leave the solar device in the sun doing what it does best somewhere and then do a normal fast charge into your smartphone in one go later on. And you'll have seen my demo of the ProPorter USB mobile charger in Show 30. I'm very impressed by this and it's the ideal gadget to slip fully charged into your briefcase when heading off on a trip. Yes, in an ideal world, your smartphone's battery would last for days, but with the sheer amount of functionality now being shoehorned in, it's perhaps not surprising that conserving battery life has taken on some prominence. Anyway, hopefully this will have given you a few ideas to use with your own devices.